Welcome back to another Primary Care Saturday. If you're new here, this is the Socrates Medicine channel. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe for more medical content. But in the interim, let's get into hypertension. As you can see, there's a range of blood pressure parameters. The normal would be less than 120 systolic over 80. Then you can see an elevated blood pressure. Stage one hypertension is 130 to 139 systolic over 80 over 89. And then stage two hypertension is greater than 140 over 90. Um, systolic and diastolic. So first, when you're evaluating for hypertension, you want to think about the common medications that raise blood pressure, right? So these would be medicines like an SSRI, SNRIs, TCAs, steroids. Uh, Over-the-counter medications can include things like NSAIDs, ibuprofen. Don't forget about decongestions. And then there's supplements, things like licorice and St. John's wort. Those all elevate um, blood pressure. And then, of course, we have oral contraceptives for the female patients. You want to consider those that are going to be raising the blood pressure. So to, to diagnose hypertension, you need actually two subsequent readings, usually two different office visits in the clinic. Um, so two different readings, about two weeks to a month apart. And so then the question becomes, what do we do with persistently elevated or persistent readings in stage one and stage two? So the game plan first would be lifestyle modification. And so <clears throat> for normal blood pressure readings here, elevated stage one and stage two, actually all of these people need to be counseled on lifestyle modification. So what does lifestyle modification mean? That's a, an extensive list here of things that we can do to uh, modify our lifestyle. And you'll notice that all of these on the right side here, on the right side of your screen, all of these drop the systolic and diastolic blood pressure readings. So for example, just simply losing weight or weight loss is going to drop the blood pressure readings by five millimeters of mercury, which is pretty impressive, right? And so did you notice that, um, you know, which one of these drops the blood pressure the greatest? It's actually the DASH diet. Isn't that, isn't that really cool? So um, lifestyle modification has a, a very large role in actually dropping blood pressure. And you can, you can see the list here of um, sodium restriction, resistant exercise, you know, all of these are just great for patients. The medical management of hypertension depends on the patient population. So for the most part, our goal is going to be a blood pressure less than 130 over 80. And there, there is another exception um, that I'm going to talk about in a little bit during this video. Um, however, you know, for like those 90-year-olds, for example, you can be more lenient with a goal blood pressure of less than 150. So the main three populations I want you to, to focus on are African Americans, diabetics, and those with chronic kidney disease or CKD. African Americans actually respond better through evidence-based medicine to calcium channel blockers and thiazide diuretics. I typically go for the chlorothaladone, but any of the calcium channel blockers and thiazides work well to, to start or initiate treatment. Diabetics should be on ACE inhibitors and or an ARB, excuse me, or an ARB for renal protection. And especially if they're spilling albuminuria, then you really want to start an ACE or ARB on them. The third patient population that requires specific recommendations um, would be the chronic kidney disease patients. The National Kidney Foundation, specifically the KDOQI, those guidelines um, follow that they want a tighter blood pressure goal of actually less than 120 systolic. And so for a CKD without albuminuria, you want to go for an ACE or R thiazide diuretic. You can also do a calcium channel blocker. And if there's greater than 300 um, milligrams per day of albuminuria, then you want to go for an ACE or ARB. If the patient has a uh, greater than 20 over 10 points um, from the goal treatment of blood pressure, you need to initiate, initiate not one, but actually two blood pressure medications. And then you want to start thinking about, you know, resistant hypertension and, and what that entails. And that's actually when the patient is on three blood pressure medications, including a diuretic at optimal doses, or they are controlled on four different blood pressure medicines. So when someone has resistant hypertension, the first thing you need to confirm would be medication adherence. Are they taking their medicines appropriately at the correct times? And then you want to get reliable blood pressure logs or blood pressure readings. So typically try to have them take their blood pressure at home, and then you have them bring their blood pressure cuff or blood pressure machine into the office. So that way you can compare the accuracy of their cuff with the cuff at the, hop, at the office. And then you want to address lifestyle uh, modification. You want to, again, look over like the over-the-counter meds, review like nasal decongestions. And, and then, of course, you want to review like some pathomimetics like cocaine. You'd be surprised. Some people, you know, you find you do some history digging and they, they actually like taking cocaine. So 
Um, and then again, you know, if it's still elevated, then we start doing the secondary hypertension workup. So that's going to be here. You want to think about like hyperaldosteronism. This is actually underdiagnosed. You can do the rain and aldosterone levels. Remember that if it's greater than 20 over 10, it's it's pretty common for hyperaldosteronism. If it's like 30 over, uh, the ratio is greater than 30 over 10, then it's definitely like slam dunk, um, most likely primary hyperaldosteronism. Um, and then, and, and for, for this exam, for this test, um, remember that the ACE and ARB, they do not affect the rain and aldosterone um, lab value. So they can be on the ACE for a little bit and then get the rain and aldosterone. It's not going to affect your, your, um, your serum aldosterone and your serum rain and levels. Then you want to also consider things like renal artery stenosis. And to check for that, you can actually do a renal ultrasound. And then, of course, you want to look for like CKD. You can also do a creatinine microalbumin ratio for that. And then you want to, um, you know, if they're on five blood pressure medicines, they're still hypertensive. They've shown a log. Um, they take their blood pressure, you know, three times a day. Um, they're on all these different medicines, different um, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, spironolactone, all these things. And then you want to start thinking about, um, an adrenal mass, looking for like a pheochromocytoma, and you can actually check that with serum and urine metanephrines. Now that we've reviewed how to diagnose hypertension and the interventions we can do and treatment modalities, let's do a practice question. So I'll read the question and then we can pause. You can think about the answer choices and then we'll go through why the correct answer is the correct answer and why the wrong ones are the wrong answers. So. This is a 68-year-old man with a history of hyperlipidemia. He comes into your clinic for a blood pressure check. One month ago, his blood pressure was 160 over 92. He started walking 30 minutes each day with his wife, and he has no complaints today. He stays. He feels well. The blood pressure reading today is 164 over 90. So the question is, what is the next best step? And we'll just read the answer choices. You can start a calcium channel blocker, A. B is start calcium channel blocker and angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor or an ACE inhibitor. C is perform urine, creatinine, and microalbumin. And D is perform a renal ultrasound and start a calcium channel blocker. So if you want to think through these uh, answer choices, go ahead and pause the video here. So the answer would be B. The blood pressure is greater than 20 over 10 points, and it's not at your goal. Remember, our goal is less than 120 over 80. So the answer would be B. You want to start a calcium channel blocker and angiotensin converting enzyme. You want to start two blood pressure medications on this gentleman. I would typically bring him back in a couple months, see how he's doing, or even you know sooner a month, and repeat the blood pressure check with these uh, after initiating these two medications. So start calcium channel blocker A is a good option, but because we're greater than 20 over 10 points for our blood pressure goal, we need to start two blood pressure medicines. Performing A or C, performing a urine creatinine to microalbumin ratio is a good idea if we're starting to think that he has resistant hypertension and we're going to be hunting for a cause of why we can't get that blood pressure down. But it's not the right answer. So there's a better answer, which would be B. And then D, a renal ultrasound, start calcium channel blocker. That's a really good idea, too, if we're going to be thinking or hunting for, like, CKD or renal artery stenosis. Um, but like we said earlier, starting these two blood pressure medicines is the best uh, answer. So that's it for today, guys. If you have any other questions, please leave a comment. Let me know, um, was this video helpful? And if you're new here, um, please like and subscribe. And thank you so much for your time.